You are welcome. You're welcome in this place. 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 Yes, Lord. You're welcome in this place. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Have your way.
separate us nothing can separate us from your love oh
children you know no matter how you've been treated on this earth the Lord's desire is to delight in you
so much more. I don't think we can even begin to imagine how much more God has for us. I love the fact that God's ways are not our ways and his ways are so much higher than our ways. We look at situations or circumstance and we either think, oh my gosh, that's huge or that's great or that's too big or too much. But I love the fact that we serve a God of too much. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I love that everything we have, he has given us. Yeah. And I love that everything we need, he has. There's no need that you have that Jesus can't meet. There's not one. There's not an area in your life that is too big for Jesus. There's nothing that he can't do or won't do for you when you come to him in the, with the right heart. And you know, I love the scripture that says, God will give you the desires of your heart. And I know, you know, that sounds pretty, you know, great, like anything, but the, I love the fact that we get the desires of our heart when our heart lines up with his desires. And so when we are truly seeking him first and then the desires of our heart, no matter what it's for, I don't care if it's for your bills, I don't care if it's for a vacation that you need or it's to give away, that if it is lining up with his word and his will, he will give it to you. God wants you rested, he wants you full, he wants you overflowing, pouring into other people's lives. And if you are not rested, and if you are not full, then it's going to be really hard to pour. Because what happens is you're looking at yourself. And the truth is, the desire of his heart is that we're not looking at ourselves, that we're looking out. You know... If you're going through anything in your life right now and you're struggling financially, if you've been standing in the gap for something to come to pass, maybe it's your child to come home or a relative to be saved or just a breakthrough in your own life, I just want to encourage you. Maybe it's even in your own prayer life. Maybe it's in your home. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe, you know, it's your job. I, I don't know all of your situations, but I do know that God does. And I do know that this, that when you will get your eyes off your situation and start looking for somewhere else to minister to somebody else, your situation will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yes. And so I just want to encourage you tonight to look for opportunities, to be a blessing to somebody else, and, and, and to, to take the situation. You know, if I look at it this way, I wanna be a blessing to somebody else so that, because, you know, I want to be able to go to God and give him my things. And, and when we go to him and we give him our things, then we can go and be a blessing to somebody else. He can use us. It's hard to use somebody who's struggling. It's hard to use somebody who doesn't have any joy. You know, it's hard. It, 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 you know, think about it. Think about how hard it is to do something. I don't know about you, but it's harder to start a car in Illinois right now than it is in Florida. You know, sometimes when, when, it's, when it's cold, when it's hard, it's just, it's not easy. Yeah. And I know that life is not easy. And I just want to encourage you that whatever you're dealing with right now, this too shall pass. Because we're not staying where we're at. You know, life is a journey. And every... I, it was just such a great word for me last week. I needed it. 
Because, you know, praise God for George and Darlene. But the truth is, I don't want to live in their house. I want to live in my house. I want my furniture. I want to be living where I want to. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy the journey. Because I'm not going to just look to the destination and miss everything else. I, listen, life, everything. If, if, there, if there isn't one challenge, can I tell you, if you're challenging something right now, when you get through that, there'll be another challenge. He didn't call us overcomers for nothing. There's going to be some things to overcome. Amen? And the truth is, along that way, we can either choose to have joy or we can choose to look at everything that's wrong. There's something good in your life if you love Jesus. If you're saved, you got something good in your life. Amen? So I just want to encourage you tonight to get your eyes off of your circumstance because they don't make you, they reveal you. And get your eyes on Christ and His Word and His promises. Start speaking what you seek and quit saying what you see. And start just determine. Be determined to find good in every situation. And can I tell you, I know it's not always easy. I know what it's like to be tired. I know what it's like to work hard. I know what it's like to be disappointed. All of those things. But we don't stay there. We, we're overcomers. We're more than overcomers. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. Amen? And our heel will bruise his head. Amen? Yeah. But it is up to you whether you exercise that authority over Satan or not. It's your choice. Amen? And I want to encourage you that all power and authority has been given to you to do that. And the God who hung on the cross at Calvary is able to see you through. Amen? Yeah. Come on, tell somebody he's able to see you through. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, you have one minute of Christian fellowship. Thanks, guys. Come on, give the worship team a hand. Pastor Tony will. Hallelujah. Jesus is in the house. God is good and he is faithful. Thank you. Let there be light. Hallelujah. Wow, this is so nice, watching all you fellowship. Hey, Jeff, the guy right next to you is from Germany. His name is Tom. Hallelujah. Hi, Tom. Don't want to embarrass you or anything. Oh. Praise God. Well, if you're joining us uh, live stream, welcome to Victory at Sarasota. And if you're here tonight, welcome. We're so glad that you're here with us. We're excited because we love Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have any first-time visitors? I see Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, guys. I haven't met your husband, but welcome. And then Tom is talking to Sabina. He's from Germany. He came to the sale at Leroy and Maria's, and Maria invited him to church, and he came. Hallelujah. Is there any other first-time visitors tonight? Well, the ushers have a packet for you. And usher, if you just lift your hands, the ushers will give it to you. Stephanie, right over here by, um, if, oh, praise God, man, Marilyn, you're good. You go. Cha -ching. Um, and so we welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. We 
Our desire is that when you come to Victory at Sarasota, that you sense the presence of God and you feel the love. Amen? Um, just a couple real quick announcements, and then we have an awesome video we want to share with you. It's a little lengthy, but um, it's the John Mark McMillan video. And since we're getting ready to kick off, his tour is getting ready to kick off, and we're um, hosting his uh, conf uh, concert in um, uh, March 31st at The Source. Um, we wanted to just share this with you because some of you may not be familiar with him, but he is the um, artist that wrote this song, Oh, How He Loves Me. And it, how he loves me. I added, oh, how he loves me. That's a new song. <laughs> It'll be out next month. No. <laughs> I sang a new song before singing a new song was hip because I didn't know the words and I made up my own words as I went. <laughs> um, so... We'll show that in just a few minutes. We want to receive the offering. But before that, I just want to bring a couple things to your attention. How many of you received the insert inside? This is just a reminder not to forget our beloved Brian and Brenda Gibbs. Amen? Everybody say hi. And so we know you love them just as much as we do. They've stepped out in faith, just like it says. They're in Dallas. And if you watch Facebook, it looks like they are having a great time. Amen? They're where they're supposed to be, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we want to be a blessing to them. We ask you just to continue to pray for them. And if God puts it on your heart, to sow into them. And all the information is there. Amen? Um, and then just another quick announcement. Don't forget, this coming Sunday, not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow, Victory at Sarasota's first annual picnic. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. The church is supplying all of the meat. They'll be judging on the side dish and the, um, and on the, uh, well, you want to judge me. No, just kidding. Oh, okay. The orphans? No, okay. So, um, uh, I forgot where. Oh. Judging. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, judging on the side dish and the dessert, okay? So, um, and I, I don't, I don't want to disqualify anybody if they take it out of the jewel, oh, no, not jewel, what's it called? Public box and <laughs> that's what I would do. I'd take it out of a public box and put it in a homemade <laughs> Casseroles. <laughs> or pay somebody to make it for me. <laughs> um, so, and also, I, yeah, so that's all good. Also, I just wanted to um, tell you, I don't know how many of you, uh, those of you who were able to attend last night, but last night was Anchored's first gathering. Amen? <laughs> and ten, ten people gathered. Yeah. And so it's really cool. They kind of shared a little bit with us. What they're going to do is they're going to gather at different places, the beach, whatever. It's young adults. Um, if you're married or, you know, you don't have to be. It's not singles. It's young adults. Um, and then they hung out at the beach, and then they went to Chili's. And what they're going to do is each time they gather, somebody will just share. Is that the picture? Oh. They had a really cool picture of all of them, but oh well. Um, I didn't send it to them. I think it's still in my phone. But um, every month, somebody else is just going to share a little something. You know, it's a great opportunity to gather, encourage, exhort each other, and then even feed each other. Amen? You know, because it's a great way to be able to share what God's putting on your heart. Amen? Um, also, uh, if you received a text and you're one of the leaders at the Victory of Sarasota, Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary, we have a meeting. And so we asked you to attend. It's the first meeting Pastor Tony and I will hold with all of the leaders. It's an important meeting. And so if you receive that text, if for any reason you can't make it, please let us know. But we believe it's going to be a, 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 a life-changing meeting, really, because it's going to take us to the new next step. Amen? 
Um, so plan to be here. If you have children, we're going to work out some type of arrangements for your children. So we'll figure that all out. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, how about Pastor Tony leading worship last week? Wasn't that exciting? Yeah. That was very cool. Amen. He's leading again next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, John and Jacob are going to a worship conference. Yeah, so God is good. Amen. And so we're excited. How many of you are excited to be here tonight? Amen. Yeah. We're excited to have you. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being faithful to the house of God. Um, I, I want you to know that without you, victory is not is nothing. Because you are the body. You are the church. Amen? And we value you, and I want you to know that. And I, want, I just want you to know how much, even just being here this short time, your faithfulness means to us. Amen? Um, how many of you are ready to give tonight? Ushers, if you would just prepare yourselves to receive the offering. You know, our gifts honor God. And because we have a long video, that's all I'm going to tell you tonight, is your gifts honor God. No, the truth is God wants to bless you. Amen? And you can't outgive God. God is faithful, and I need to get down there because I need to write an envelope. Because God is faithful. Because we had a great sale this weekend. I got a tan. That was just like bonus. Come on. I mean, that's so good. Let's pray over the offering. We'll receive it. And then you ready to kick on the video? Hallelujah. How many of you saw Nate's red rocket with him and Heather? Oh, my gosh. Nate, she's your star. She is so funny. I know. I've lost. Ooh, I mean, I'm telling you, if you haven't watched it, it's like how to lose weight on I don't even know what I was watching, but I was laughing so hard. <laughs> they were saying words that I was like, I need a chemistry class. I don't know what those are. But it was so funny. Are you guys ready to give? Father, we just come before you tonight, and we thank you that you're a great God. We thank you, Lord, that there is no lack in you. There's no lack in heaven, so there's no lack in us because you dwell in us. Lord, help us to be good stewards of our finances. Teach us how to use them to benefit the kingdom and to be wise with them, God. Lord, I ask that there, that even in, in, as gas prices have gone up, Lord, that in the people of victory, that their gas will go farther than anybody else. I thank you, God, that, that their finances go farther because they're tithers and because their money is blessed. So, Lord, right now I speak a blessing over each and every giver here. I thank you, God, that you would bring increase into their lives. More. Give them more. You're a God of more. So, Lord, I'm asking for more so that they can give more. Here at Victory, we teach giving to have to give, not giving to give. Amen? And so I just speak a blessing over your finances and over you tonight as you give in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? God bless you as you give. Ushers, you may receive the offering. Okay, so <laughs> the video is coming on, huh? Just let me get down. used to going into videos. <laughs>
about seven years ago when I was down in Jacksonville, Florida. I flew down there to work in the studio, and while I was down there, we got a call that several of our friends had been in a, a really bad car accident. And uh, later on that night, I found out that uh, one of my best friends, uh, Steve, had died as a result of injuries from that accident. I woke up the next morning, and I was uh, just really angry and confused and, and hurt. And I process things through music. You know, that's just how I do um, deal with my issues and so. Um, I really needed, I felt that I really needed some sort of, um, I needed to have some sort of conversation with God because I was really, really frustrated. I felt like there were some things I needed to say. And so that's what I would do through the music. And that's really a lot of where the song, How to Love, came out of, was I needed these words. I needed this conversation. I'm really looking forward to playing some music tonight. And I'm really excited. Hollywood, hot pink love. It's um, it's the kind of love that's willing to love things that are messy, and willing to love even the difficult and sort of um, you know, just kind of gross kind of things. You know. Oh, how you love us so. Oh, how you love us. How you love us. That's really the kind of song I wanted to write is through this frustrating period and he could you know in my anger and my resentment and in my frustration he could still love me through that you know and, and in this process of dealing with the uh, my buddy dying love me through that and he was okay he wasn't you know offended at the fact that I was angry at God I just wish it was easier over with I mean it, you know you think after seven seven, seven years it's still really tough the song is in celebration of weakness and anger in celebration of a God who would want to hang with us through those things who would want to be a part of our lives through those things and despite who we are he would want to be a part of us and be a part of our community and be a part of our family and that's that's the kind of love I, I think I'm talking about
Praise God. Well, we're going to have an eternity to figure it out. But we're going to need every minute of it. To figure out how much he loves us. It's powerful. I would encourage you. I see it. Oh. I, I would encourage you. Hang on just a moment. I would encourage you to buy tickets. For one, he's an awesome artist. For one, Victory is sponsoring it. You know, be a part of, of what's going on here. You know, I, I encourage you. The tickets are only $15, and they're going fast. Hallelujah. I say that prophetically, you know. But the, the truth is you, you want to be a part of what's going on at Victory. Support us, support John Mark McMillan, okay? All right? That's all I got to say. Other than that, I have to say, it is my son's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anthony. Happy birthday to you. It was, uh, it was actually his birthday on Monday. But when I, when I came in, Jane said, we must celebrate your son's birthday. Thank you, Jane, so much. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, tonight, please. The first Peter, the second chapter. First Peter 2. We're going to start off at the 11th verse. First Peter. Peter 2, 11. As soon as you're there, just say amen. amen. All right. You guys are on it. Really? That's good. That's all right. First Peter 2, 11. It says this, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works which they observe. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves. Say that word, submit. Amen. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whatever, or what, whether to the king or to the, as, as supreme, or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts right through and gets to the point of what you want us to hear tonight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray that the hearers hear this message. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying to us this night in Jesus' name. Amen. You've come into this church tonight, I know, because you desire to be freer than you were before you came in. That's why we're here, right? We are here to be 
free. Free from the enemy's oppression. Free from the bondage that the enemy tries to lay upon us. Free from the world. Amen? We're sojourners. We're passing through. That's what it said the very part at the beginning of this. Last week I talked upon the Holy Spirit in a very general way. But I wanted to speak of the Holy Spirit in a way that it wasn't freaky. Come on. The Holy Spirit's not freaky. The Holy Spirit is real. As we know, he's the third part of the Godhead. He's the voice of God. He's the voice that we listen to. And it is so important that we have an understanding of that. But there are certain things in our lives that hinder us from hearing from God, hearing the Holy Spirit in our lives. And one of those things is exactly what this scripture that I read talks about. What hinders us? Well, God, for one, desires us to be blameless. Blameless. Said it right there. Without, without fault. How many of you believe that we can obtain that? I mean, I'll be truthful and honest. I work at it every day until that little old lady pulls out in front of me. A couple of you had little old ladies pull out in front of you today probably. God calls us to avoid the appearance of evil. The appearance of evil. We are not to appear evil before men. Appearing evil is a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. We can appear evil to men in the very fact of how our actions are. When that little lady pulled out in front of us, did we smile or did we raise a hand? I pray that we smile because around here there's going to be a little old lady that's coming around the other corner too. Especially if you live in Venice. <laughs> I've really worked on this patience thing, I tell you. God be with me. Hallelujah. The title of the message tonight is Willing and Obedient. Willing and Obedient. But let me say it this way. And as soon as I say this, Willing and obedient sounds obtainable, doesn't it? We can be willing and obedient. But when I say it in this way, obedience and submission. As soon as I say that word submission, all of a sudden hearts go, submission? Why? We live in the greatest country in the world. You know that, don't you? America is still the greatest country in the world. Yes, it has its faults. It has some shortcomings. But, you know, I believe a lot of that's up to the church. The truth is this. When we say submission, it kind of hits us crossways. Because from the very conception of the United States of America, we were made to be independent. America is awesome. But there was, a, there was a spirit that was sown into this country that if you're not independent, then you're not free. But the truth is, that's wrong. You can be in total submission and be totally free. In fact, we find freedom in submission. We are believers. We follow Christ. He is the ultimate submitter. Let me say that again. Christ is the ultimate submitter. Yeah, come on. Nobody submitted better than he did. Yeah. He was perfect at submission. Yeah. Ooh. There's power in submission. But somewhere down the line, when we hear the word submission, we think we're going to be controlled. Yeah. What's that preacher talking about now? He's only been here six weeks, and he's talking about submission. Who does he think he is? 
He's trying to control me. Trust me, I don't want to control you. Because of, here's what happens when you control somebody, you got to keep them. You got to have a handle on them all the time. That is way too much work for me. No, I will turn that over to God. But we must learn how to submit. Submission is a part of being a Christian. Do I have any Christians in here tonight? Then I have people that know how to submit. Hallelujah. The common questions that are always asked when submission and obedience is, comes up is, is one is this. Is obedience unconditional? What if I don't agree with the leader's decisions? What if authority is making bad decisions? What if authority tells me to do something wrong? Where do I draw the line? This message tonight, if you get a revelation of it, it will set you free. It's one of those messages that it might not be a hip, hip, hurrah, hooray right now. But when you get it, you're going to be free, and you're going to be dancing down the aisles. But, but the truth of it is, it's going to take more than tonight to just go over submission. I'm going to allow the Lord to, to use this and just, what we're going to work on, we're going to take it slow, okay? You guys good for slow dancing? We're, we're going to slow dance this thing, okay? Because I'm going to tell you what. Who was here Tuesday night? Praise God. Tuesday night, Kirk Bennett delivered an awesome word. An awesome revelation. An awesome vision that he shared with us. Aren't you thankful that people, when, when, they, when they have visions, they, they like to share them with you? I love that. You know what I mean? And... And it's so lined up with my spirit. Did it line up with anybody else's spirit? Amen. But in that, I realized this. As the, 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 the people that come from the north and the east coast down into Florida, as they end up here and they begin to get saved, we need some teaching. We need some understanding we need some foundation. What, what would happen tonight if there was 100 extra people here and every one of them got saved? We had 100 new visitors and they got saved. What would the church do? Sunday morning, every church had 100 people. Every church in Sarasota, the county surrounding Manatee, Sarasota County, Surrounding areas. Every church had 100 extra people, and they all got saved. Thousands of people would be saved. The way I heard it, that's what's going to happen. Glory to God. Where are we going to be? What, what's going to happen? Where do we put them? How do we work with them? We need some foundational teaching. Amen? One of the things we're going to talk about with the leaders on uh, Tuesday night is our vision. We're going to continue in that. And one of the things that we have an understanding of is the need for foundational teaching of the biblical principles of the Word of God. So everybody's singing from the same sheet of music. I love that term. Because if Jacob had one set of music and Matt had another set and John had another set, it would be a mess. It would be terrible. It wouldn't be pretty. Who likes pretty? I love pretty. Purdy. Listen, we want to be able to know what to do with the masses that are coming in. This is the year of the greater. Every, every week, Something is more and more confirmed to me that this is the year of the greater. People are coming in. Get ready. It's going to get messy. 
Are you okay with that? It's going to get busy. Are you okay with that? Are you ready to submit? Busy means you're going to have to maybe get rid of a few of your plans. How many of you have been in revival? In a, in a, in a time where revival broke out, <coughs> excuse me, it gets a little messy. I remember when revival hit us in uh, the mid-90s. We had piles of clothes that high that weren't getting washed. Oh, maybe this high. Sorry, my wife's here. That high. There were things that weren't getting done. But you know what? My children were a product of that. They were laughing the other night about what revival has done for them and what, what they went through in revival. And we're always challenged, you know, when, when uh, some things happen at the church and so on and so forth where, where people have things going on in their lives. But I remember we did whatever we could to get to those revival services because we needed it. We needed it revived. But it took a place of submitting, submitting to the call of God upon our lives. See, I don't even want to talk about submitting to man right now. I just want to talk about submitting to God. Because sometimes we, we feel that we do. But it would be amazing to look at the big screen of what God's already have in our, has in our lives and some of the things that we thought we submitted to. Submission is this. <coughs> Submission is believing for something in your life, asking God for it. Because we heard already tonight that he gives us to the desires of our heart. And we're believing. And it's a good thing. It's, it's got purpose. It's got plan. It's got, it's got destiny written all over it. It's for the kingdom of God. But the truth is, it doesn't come to pass. In fact, it... It doesn't get accepted by God. But we thought, wow, that was what we were supposed to be doing. And then all of a sudden, we get upset. Sometimes people get angry with God. You even heard it on the video tonight. He, was, he, was, he wasn't angry with God, but he was angry. Why? Listen, God has the plan. He has the plan for your life. He has the plan for victory. He has the plan for Sarasota and the surrounding areas. His plan is what we want to follow. Amen. So when God doesn't, doesn't answer your prayer, per se, is that okay with you? The silence of the lambs. Ooh. Ah, Lord, we're going to need some more work, aren't we? If God doesn't answer your prayer, is that okay with you? Yes. You know why it should be? Because he's got a better plan. Come on. God's plan is always better than our plan. Come on. And even when we think we're being led of the Holy Spirit, yes. is it possible, probably not, that we missed it? Because we're super spiritual people. When we hear from God, we know we heard from God. But is it possible that we missed it? See, I, I told you you wouldn't be clapping tonight. But I tell you what, when you get the revelation of this, it will set you free. It will set you free when you don't see the things you've been believing for come to pass. But there's some things we got to do in our life, lives to see the plan, the perfect plan, the perfect will of God come to pass in your life. See, what happens is when that doesn't happen, then you get upset. You get discouraged. And you think, shoot, well, just forget it. 
I'm not going to, I can't believe that's never come to pass in my life. The truth is this, maybe God was just seeing how you would react. I remember, because this is very fresh on my mind, 15 years we've been believing that we would be in Florida, somewhere. We were just about ready to settle for anything, but (laughs) praise God we didn't because we got the best. Amen? Amen. The truth is we've been believing for 15 years. I remember the very first time we were in Orlando and and, uh, God had given us a business and and we were vacationing, and we were sitting at one of the uh, water parks, and God had been giving us some ideas for new businesses and things like that. It didn't come to pass. But it sounded like a great idea. It sounded like a good plan. It sounded like a God plan. But it didn't come to pass. You know what we did? We continued to rejoice. We continued to rejoice. See, this is where we've got to get we got to continue to rejoice. When we don't see the things that we think should be coming to pass in our lives, we need to continue to rejoice. Amen. Let's try it right now. Amen. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Woo. All right. I just, want, I just want to see if you had it in you. You do. You're, you're good. You know how to rejoice. See, because that's a key. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would. To Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Verse 17. Obey, obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for who? You. Me. Yeah. I I see two instructions here that are very clear. To obey those who rule over us and to be submissive to those who rule over us. We can obey and not necessarily be submissive. We can obey but not necessarily be submissive. Obey means to comply with or follow the commands. Submission means an act of submitting to give over or yield to the power or authority of another. That's where we kind of, you know, what's their motivation? Why are they wanting to do this? Can I tell you what? Either you trust God or you don't. If that plan didn't come to pass in your life, you just continue to trust God because he's got a better one, right? We know the words, obedience is better than sacrifice. Have we ever heard that? Yeah, that's the word, by the way. Obedience is better than sacrifice. True submission is is learned by following Christ. You want to know how to submit? Just follow Christ. You know, I find it amazing as being a pastor now for over 10 years, you probably wouldn't get a big crowd of people if you had a reader board out front and you said, come, come and hear the submissiveness of Christ, the sacrifices that he made. You know, that's not real revival stuff. That's, but I'm going to tell you what, that's core biblical stuff. You know, I... I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm challenged by some of the scriptures in the, in the word of God. Just the simple ones that Jesus said. Turn your other cheek. If Terry came up and slapped me right now, man, I'd have to lay you down. I know that, but the truth is, come on. I'm just being transparent. Is that all right? Okay. True submission is learned by following Christ. Of course, submission is not easy, but it's essential in our walk for Christ. It's essential. A submissive heart 
is a heart God can trust. If there's one thing that I would love to have as an epithet would be he was a man that God could trust. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to be trusted by God. Because when you're trusted, that means you have a relationship. Because when you have relationship, you can trust someone. I've been married to my wife for over 26 years. I can trust her. Because I know she's for me. The song that we heard, How He Loves. When you understand how somebody loves you and how much they love you, you can trust them. Because they want the best for you. Can I say this? God wants the best for you. He, he does, he's not a second-hand God, second-rate God that says, oh, well, you know, you've been believing for this, and sorry, that wasn't in the, in the plan, but how about this little thing right here? Let me tell you what, if that happens, and you know it's from God, do it. Because if you're faithful with little, he makes you ruler over more. See, that's what we got to be. See, we think we come in with this big, grandiose plan. Hundreds of people are coming in. This is what's going to happen. What? If one came in tonight, all of the angels in heaven would rejoice if they got saved. Jesus said, if one of the sheep left, he would go after that sheep and leave the 99. God is so into the little things in your life that when he can trust you, with the little stuff that he gives you. See, a lot of people are like, you know, I've got so much more potential in me. Come on. I, I, you know, this is who I am. For years, we had people come into our church in Illinois. And we thought, Lord, this is the couple that we could work with. This is a couple that obviously know the word. Obviously they, you know, could be a part of what we're doing. Our goal from the very beginning was to turn it over to somebody. Listen, as a Christian, we should be working our way out of a position. <clears throat> the problem is men and women fear. Listen, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not intimidated by somebody else to come up and preach. Hello? It doesn't threaten me. Listen, if God were to move us out of here, he's got something better somewhere else. I'm not saying we're doing that, but hallelujah. But when we're faithful with little things, God sees our heart. And that's when he gives us more. Can I tell you what? There's little things in this church. Little things that make a big difference. Little things that make a big difference. Greeting at the door. It's huge. The sound. It's huge. Those guys make these guys sound good. The children's ministry. The hospitality ministry. Hospitality. You know what? We've been believing for somebody to take over um, Refresh Cafe. Who said, come on, sign them up. I see Jane right there. Hallelujah. Praise God. The uh, young adults are, are going to work on it too. You guys can work together. Hallelujah. You do like that, don't you? That's a good fit. Glory to God. See, there's some little things. God's waiting on you to do little things, and then he'll give you 
more things. Who wants more things? More. Well, it's more is better than less, right? Hallelujah. We want the more, but are we willing to do the less? That's submission. Submitting to the fact that, that you have more greatness in you than what you might be doing, but when you do that with the best of your ability and doing it under the Lord, God gives you the greater things. Hallelujah. Listen, this is how the kingdom of God works. What some do is they try to do it in the natural, and they wonder why they never get the supernatural. You, you, you can't, that doesn't work. How is it that when you tithe, you're blessed? Doesn't make sense to the world. I remember it was one of the first things that, that was brought to our attention when, when my wife got saved and I rededicated my life and her family thought she had got into a cult. Not on a pony, that's what I'm not saying. But one of the things was, you're giving how much money? Why is that always an issue? <laughs> See, it's all a trust issue is what it is to God. If you will give a, a tithe, a 10% of your income off the top, first fruits, this message isn't about tithing, but it's about being faithful. It's about submitting to God. When we submit to God, see, this is where it is. In the submission unto the Lord and doing it with joy. See, I've been obedient in my life, but not willing. No, that's, nobody else says. Help me out. No, I've been obedient, but not willing. That's the way people are with giving. They can be obedient, but not willing. They do it grudgingly. I remember I used to come home years ago when I was a little boy. My dad wasn't saved at the time. And he'd say, how much did that preacher want from you today? <laughs> people were like this. Ooh. <laughs> but the truth is, we don't want your money. That's under the Lord. But it does take money to finance the end time harvest. To keep the, the gospel wheel spinning. Hallelujah. But the truth is, God's just testing you. Say, he's testing me. And I'm going to win. Hallelujah. And he wants you to. He wants you to win. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Anybody get anything out of this tonight? Yeah. See, God wants to build a strong church. Of course, victory, he wants strong. But he wants a strong church, a body. Did I say Isaiah 1, first chapter of Isaiah? Isaiah 1, verse 19. Isaiah 1, 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Who likes the good stuff? We're not going to get leftovers, but we have to be willing and obedient. We have to be willing and obedient to serve. Man, there were so many times that I was obedient but not willing until God began to show me. You might as well not even do it at all. Can I tell you this? Children's ministry. 
Take this for example. We don't force anybody to do that because nobody would want their children back there with somebody that was nasty. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm obedient. I'll serve in the children's ministry. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where's that little bum? Get him in here. <laughs> you just lost. I'm not sending my kid back there. No, we want people that have joyful hearts serving the children. Amen? We want people with joyful hearts that are doing the Refresh Cafe. We want people with joyful hearts that are, that are the greeters at the door. Nothing worse than a sourpuss greeter. I mean, new person. Whoa, you know what? If I don't even know what they said. Don't listen to them. No, please. Listen, if, if we're believing for hundreds of new people to come in, let's make every one of those people feel welcome. Amen. Come on. Let them, let them feel like, man, this is, this is awesome. I feel like a queen walking in the palace. I feel like a king when I walk in there. Because the first impression is so important. So don't be mean on the second one in times they come in either. Because the second impression is very important too. Listen, we need this. The joy of the Lord is in us, right? It's a fruit of the Spirit. That's how people know us, right? By the fruit of the Spirit. The joy of the Lord is, so smile. Be happy. He's, listen, I love Renee. First time, well, not the first time I was here, but in this whole transition, one of the first times I was down here, Renee was at, at, is at the end of service, and he's taking up the trash. I'm like, oh. And he's like, this is my job. Don't take it from me. Remember he said that? This is my job. Don't take it from me. Even though you're the new pastor, I want to keep my job. That's it. That's what he said. <laughs> Even though you're the new pastor, I want to keep my job. I said, no problem, brother. You got it. With joy, hallelujah. The truth is this. That's the way we should be. I don't care what you're doing. Renee, God's got more for you, and you know it already. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's in the submitting. It's in the understanding of when we're faith with little, he makes us ruler over more. But you know what? We don't go in with that attitude either. We just do it because God's called us to do it. And it just happens. You know? Because the joy of the Lord. We, we used to have to clean our own church back home. And I tell you what, I got to the point where I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed doing it when I had to do it. In fact, I got to a place where, now I'm not saying this is right, but just follow me. Okay? Hang with me on this. There was a place that we had people that wouldn't show up for cleaning. Oh, yeah. That's kind of how I felt when I walked down Sunday morning. But the truth was, I got to a point where it was like, listen, if they don't want to clean, if they don't show up, I don't want them to be here. In fact, I'm not going to let them. I'm not saying it's the right attitude. But that's how I felt. I'm not going to let them clean this beautiful church of God. Hallelujah. No, they don't get that privilege. Uh-uh. No, because there's blessings in that. Now, my attitude wasn't right. No. <laughs> so I didn't actually do that. But that's what I thought. You know what? If they're not going to serve, forget it. they don't get to serve. That's not the right attitude. But we should want to willingly serve the house of God. We are called to be servants. Yeah, that's a whole nother message. 
Got a couple more hours? No. Listen, I really feel that we've said enough tonight. But the truth of it is that we, we spoke about Hebrews 13 and verse 17. And the concluding words in that is, for that would be unprofitable for you. It would be unprofitable for you if you weren't to submit. Can I tell you what? As pastors, and we got a whole other deal going on, but the truth is, it's not unprofitable for us if you don't. It's unprofitable for you if you don't. Oh, the word's strong. It's powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword. But the truth is, your submission and service to the kingdom of God is a profit for you. It's a benefit to you. I'm a witness. Give me a witness, sister. Come on. Glory to God. Yeah. See what it does? Fills people up. Overflowing. Yeah. Press down, shaking together, running over. Woo! The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. We don't speak this to scare anyone, to frighten anyone. We want you to be blessed. We can talk about being blessed all we want. We can quote the scriptures. We can confess it over your life. But blessing comes through submission and serving. It comes through submission and and serving. I lived my life, a good portion of it, grew up in the church, baptized in the Baptist church when I was six or seven years old. I knew and understood, but it wasn't until I was, after we got married, 28 years old after that, because even right away I didn't, but after, because I, I remember when I came to church, now we're talking, I'm a transparent guy, I'm just going to be honest. When I came to church, I thought everybody was weird. And I couldn't get out of there. You know, that was my goal was to get out as fast as I could. So I'm keeping an eye on everybody that rushes out of here. In fact, go ahead and shut those doors where I take a head count. But the truth is this. It wasn't until I had an understanding. Because we'd see people in the supermarket. And they'd go to our church. I'm like, who is that? And my wife would say, well, that's so-and-so. Don't you recognize him? And I'd be like, no, I don't, because I rushed out of the church. But it wasn't until I, I submitted, and I said, Lord, I'm going to do what you've called me to do. What is it? Well, we cleaned the church, and we did bathrooms and so on and so forth, and all kinds of little things. And we did it under the Lord. And we found out there's a blessing in that. It's an awesome place to be. When we say that we like to feed the hungry and go on the streets and so on and so forth, we do. But you know what God put in my heart? It's a blessing for them, obviously. But you want to see a church strong within? Because what happens, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And when you begin to give, then you get filled up. A strong church is developed within because they're doing the principles of God because we are not hearers only, but we are doers of the word. We do what the word has called us to do. Did anybody get anything out of this tonight? Come on, let's just give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the thing that is really coming to me is, you know, obedience is not a small thing. You know, I don't know about you, but um, in Luke 6.49 it says, But those who listen and don't obey are like a man who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it crumbles into heaps of room, ruins. 
And you know, I had no idea what Pastor Tony was ministering on. In fact, I spent the last two nights at Maria's and, and Leroy's house. But when God, earlier, when I was exhorting you about if you're going through things, I just want to encourage you in this because we all go through things. And as he was preaching this message, I started thinking about it. You know, in times in my life, I don't, you know, sometimes it's like, I just don't get it, God. Why, why isn't my house selling? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't, I mean, I'm faithful. I mean, I'm serving you. I, I'm, I'm tithing. I, I'm, I'm living according to your word. Why am I not seeing breakthrough? What's up? I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I, and so, you know, God just reminded me, and it was just as he said it, that in the past what I have done is I have gone back and I have prayed and asked God if there's an area that he's asked me to do something and I haven't done it. And if that is, then God, you reveal it to me, and then I repent and I do it. Because sometimes in that little bit of disobedience, it hinders us yeah. from going to the next level with Jesus or whatever it is that he has. And so I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I want to go. I, I want to be obedient. I want to do. And, you know, I, I, like, like the scripture says, it doesn't, it, it doesn't profit me not to. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're not getting the breakthrough and you know that you've been doing what the word says to do, then examine your life yeah. and get before God. I mean, I know I'm not out sinning. I know I'm where he told me to be. I, but whatever it is, God, whatever I've missed, if you've told me to do something, then you reveal it and let me do it. Let me get right. And if not, then sell my house, you know? And, you know, God's timing is perfect. Yeah. He works all things out. And so we know we're not to be anxious for anything. Amen? And so I just want to encourage you tonight. You know, if you, if you feel like you're in a place and you need that, just get before God and get quiet and pray. You know? And if you feel like everything's crumbling and you, maybe there's somewhere. God's asked you to do something or told you to do something and you haven't done it. Amen? Hallelujah. That was a great word. Hallelujah. Come on. Why don't you just stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for how great you are and what you're doing in our lives. Now listen, every head is up and every eye is open, but this is a safe place. Amen? If you're in here tonight and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, tonight is your night. Is there anybody that would be so bold? I know. Can I tell you? I know that feeling. To be standing in a church and the preacher does that offer call, altar call. And you know that you're not saved. But it's just the hardest thing. And so if you're saved, you need to be praying and interceding right now. Because if there's anybody in here tonight that is not, we want to pray with you. And we want to introduce you to the greatest gift you'll ever receive. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? Is there anybody in here who has never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior and would like to do so tonight? Anybody at all? Hallelujah. Okay, here's the next thing. If you're in here tonight and you have received Jesus, but you're not living for him like you once have, you know, you're just lukewarm. You've lost your first true love. You're just not where you once were. You don't have that intimacy that you once had. I'm not saying you're bad. I'm not saying you're cheating. I'm not saying you're lying, you're stealing. I'm just saying... The fire has gone out, and you want to get back to where you were. If that's you, if you raise your hand, we want to pray with you.
Is there anybody at all? Praise God. And last but not least, if you're in here tonight and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in other tongues, we want to pray with you. Is there anybody in here at all tonight? Okay, praise God. Come on, Stephanie. Yay. I'm praying with you. Okay. Hallelujah. Come on. You know how much that takes. Come on. Give her a hand. All right, I'm praying with you before you leave. All right, lift your hands to heaven. I'm going to pray a blessing over you, dismiss you. And as you leave, you guys are going to be interceding for Stephanie. Amen? Hallelujah. I want you to know that you are more than conquerors. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are his beloved. He loves you. He loves to delight in you, and in this week, you're going to see the love of Jesus Christ shine on you like never before. I speak over each and every one of you that you are highly favored, that you have favor with God and favor with men, that rules and regulations are changed on your behalf, that people go out of their way to bless you, that people can't help but to want to sow into you, that if you need a job, your job is coming. Amen. If, you, if your children are not serving God, they're coming. Amen. I speak peace over you, peace in your home, that this is going to be your best week yet. I speak that this week you're going to have the opportunity to witness Jesus Christ. Amen. This is going to be your best week yet in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week in Christ. We love you. If you need prayer,